This is an Nexus Special, Episode 27. The Internet Showed Up on Monday, December 30th, 2013. This episode of the Nexus Special is hosted by Ryan Rampersad with extraordinary guests Andrew Bailey and Matthew Petchel. Hey, how's it going? It's good. How about you? I'm doing well. Really? Yeah. We're going to talk about our entire 2013 year. Oh, do you have time for that? I do have t- some time for that. Wait, you, wait you, that's the year? I had no idea it was. Yeah, that, that is the year. It's about to be over, though. Oh. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's a lot of shows throughout 2013. You know, like tons. Yeah. Tons. So, so we have plenty to talk about. Yeah. Um... Especially, especially all those shows on that beep. Yes. Just, just like that. <laughs> I think there's a lightning or something. Yeah, you know, the lightning episodes were uh, one of our favorite things, but hopefully we won't have that problem here because Skype is no longer with us. <sighs> yeah, we uh, took that behind the woodshed and shot it. For good reason. Yeah. So, uh, you know what's coming up in a few days, right? No, what is? Well, CES is coming up in a few days, so why don't we talk about this year's CES instead? Sure. So do you remember hey, what the theme of that was? Is- isn't that happening like in two weeks? Yeah, it's it's just just coming up really soon. It's on. It starts on the seventh of January in two thousand fourteen. That's... Yeah, because I I sort of have a mental schedule that goes around. It's like suddenly it's Christmas and you have all the toys you could ever dream of, and then the day after is CES, and yeah. then you're all sad because you want all that all that stuff. Exactly. That's how it happens every year. But on the other hand, the stuff that comes out at CES is kind of useless for the most part. Remember that cane. Yeah. Cane. What cane. cane? The cane? You know, the the cane... Oh, it guides your gr- elders. Yeah, so apparently there's this cane that Matt wants to buy. It has a GPS in it, and it like has a little motor, and it just tilts the way you're supposed to walk, and it will navigate you to where you're trying right, to go. So it's a smart cane, in other words. And that was that was demoed at um, 2003, uh, 2013's CES. That was great. That was great. Uh, did, did it also have a 4K TV in it? No, it did no, not no have screen. a 4K. No screen in it. But, you know, 4K TVs were kind of a big thing at CES this year. And so was those OLEDs. OLEDs? OLEDs. 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 Especially those 4K OLEDs. 4K OLEDs. I don't know if there are actually 4K OLEDs, are there? There should be. Well, so do you remember seeing the TVs from CES? You know, it was the TV that was... Uh, that had like this weird easel kind of thing. Like it was, it wasn't a connected frame. It wasn't just a single unit. It wasn't just a screen. It was had to be in this weird thing Samsung built. It was just a really bizarre model. I wouldn't know because we don't watch TV. Well, yeah, that's true. I mean, I watch TV about TVs, but I don't watch things that are on TV. I mean, yeah, that's, that's right. Weird. You know, and and our and our the springtime in 2013 was a little bit boring. Um, because it, nothing really happened until I.O. in the summer. But I.O. was great this year. So what you know, happened I, to All I. those devices. All those out. devices. All those devices. Like what? All those devices. What devices? Hmm. What devices? Glass? No, that Wait. happened last year. Yeah. No. What devices came out? Well, you know, it's kind of funny. So let, why don't we talk a little bit about Glass? So Glass was promised at 2012's Google I.O., but then didn't come out until basically the next year's I.O., but a little bit before that. The glass didn't get here in time for, you know, there was no big hurrah. There was no big announcement. There was no big send off or send out or call in. It just happened. But what, what, what was announced actually at IO? Not, not Android, no devices. Do you, do you remember? I heard that they really hyped some APIs. They really did. They, they built a lot of new Google Play APIs and, you know, those kind of things. They were setting the groundwork for 4.3 and 4.4, but we didn't know about it at the time. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, didn't they line some stuff up to be shot? Or was that after I.O.? Uh, it was immediately after. That was immediately after. Could have actually been. Okay. So what what happened after I.O.? After I.O., oh, the crappy gaming thing nobody cares about. Uh, except a lot of people. Uh, and, Who cares about E3? Uh, you yeah, know, did, didn't you uh, go there too? Yeah, we did go there, but uh, we were days late, I didn't, turns out. We saw the trucks leaving. Yeah. You know, I liked E3 years ago. When I, I I thought I liked it, that was back when like Sony and Xbox they all had they actually did they have had a, booths they had, there they had things there they they had, they had events here this year too and that was it was no different but now but, they have their own events too. well they did have their own events but barring those events the PS4 event we already knew what we knew about the PS4 and they didn't want to show us what the console looked like until or E3. how much it cost right exactly and so. 
like the most important things about you know buying it. Oh, it turns out buying something is important. Uh, one of the things we learned at A3 was that the, those pricing schemes that the Xbox One would be the expensive one and the PS4 would be the cheaper one. Which was kind of funny. You know, it's it's kind of it, it's usually the opposite. You know, Sony goes for that higher end. That's what they did for the uh, PS3. Did they do that with the PS2? I'm not sure. Uh, that was actually pretty reasonable. I think it was 3.99 when it came out. Hmm. So pretty crazy. So isn't that the same price as the PS4? Uh, no, it's actually cheaper. 399, inflation. 399. inflation, man, get oh, on the inflation. Okay, fine, inflation. I'm going to get on the inflation. Um, well, so what do you think about having no Nintendo event this year? Well, there was a new there was Nintendo products released throughout the year. Yeah, but there was no event at E3, and that's unusual. That's fine, but next year they're getting ready for next year. They're going to raise the roof again. By dropping it on themselves. Only from the 42nd floor of the East Wing building in Tokyo. Um, well, there's, there's that. I, I also think it's kind of interesting that the, the, both the announcements that we had from the actual people there were, were pushing really, really well known games on the, you know, PS3 and the Xbox 360 platforms that were just about to be obsoleted in a few months. So it, it was a really mixed year for E3. Yeah. Mm hmm. So after that, we had WWDC, and unfortunately, we don't have our good good friend here to tell us all about it. Oh, the expert. Yeah, the expert, uh, Brian Mitchell. Because no, nobody here has a positive view of Apple. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you do? Well, I mean, I don't have a negative view like you do. Sort of. Bailey, do you, do you like uh, Apple? It's not about not liking. Not really. It's just about not hating. What I hate is the Apple press coverage. Yes. Like this, all this Apple Roddy stuff. All right, let's cover them. What, what yeah, happened? Let's, what let's happened go. at WWDC? Yes, let's do it. So at <laughs> WWDC, Mavericks. 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 Talk about yourself again. No, no, no. Okay. Do that. Well, so they're they're done with the cat theme for OS code names. So Mountain Lion was the last one. Now we're on Mavericks. That's ten point nine. Sh- I'm not sure what other cats they could go through. Did they? Did they do links? No, they didn't do links. But it, once they did went they to do Lion, House Cat. No, they did not do House Cat. <laughs> I would have wanted House Cat. I kind of would have taken that too. <laughs> I mean, some of the people who have Apple products have houses. You know, they it would make they, sense. They could have flipped it a different way. They could have like, you know, asked all the executives, "What's your cat's name?" and then named new versions after cat actual, you know, execs cat names. <laughs> that would have been okay. I would have been okay with that. Well, so no more cats, uh, and 10.9 is what we're getting. And I think we actually know the, n- we, we, we have a suggestion of what the next location name in, the, in the series is, but I don't remember what it is anymore. Getting old. Yeah. Um, uh, it was leaked in some server logs somewhere. Um, but it also. on the mobile end. Well, on the mobile end, we had iOS 7, but yeah. we didn't get it. We, we got the pictures of it. So what do you think about iOS 7? You have an iPad. Yes, and I actually use it all the time. And I tell you, that Safari looks great now. You really think Safari looks better? Well, you see, this having a pale, dark, uninviting icon representing it makes me want to use it more. That's your whole life, though. That's not really an accurate description. So at, at, at WWDC, there was no new, no new hardware at all. Just new software. Oh, wait, not really. No new software either. Just just ideas of new software. Mavericks was released later in uh, September, I think, and iOS 7 was also released in September. So WWDC wasn't really uh, an exciting, you know, traditional iPhone 4-style kind of announcement. It was just run-of-the-mill. I hate run-of-the-mill. You want to talk about more run-of-the-mill, though? Well, we find that at Build. Build. So what do you remember about Build? Huh? Well, I think that they were the exact opposite of Apple, and they had a bunch of devices and hardware. Like what? I'm having a hard time remembering this year. I thought there was devices that those things... Man, did any devices come out this year? No, no devices no came de- out this year. No hardware. No hardware at all. I think um, people are just done the blue. releasing. There was previews of yes, Blue. Blue. Blue was the big talk at Build. The, preview the only of, talk. Yeah, the, the preview of Windows 8.1. So what what do we know about Windows 8.1? It came out in in uh, October, right? 8.1. 8.1. Oh, well, didn't it come out on 8.1? No, that would be too too logical. That would be like or, or wasn't that or, or was that the preview of 8.1? Uh, I don't think it came out then either. I I I I can somehow connected August 1st with 8.1. Well, it seems reasonable, but I don't think that happened. Or they wanted to or something. 
uh, they anyways. Did, they did release a preview copy, which was nice of them, that will expire in 15 days. Uh, go about your business. But what what do you think about Windows 8 and 8.1 now? Well, I just simply love having that up 8.1 update free click here in store whenever I restart my computer. You really love that, huh? I love it. It reminds me that I don't have it. So I, I personally have not upgraded any computers here uh, in the studio or elsewhere to 8.1. Because I don't really trust its upgrade process. I think it will break things that I don't have time to repair or, and don't want to repair. Um, are you running 8.1, Andrew? No. Do you have 8? I No. I've largely you know, cleaned my life of Windows 8 products. For good or reason. Rather, or, or rather, I have not had the uh, misfortune of encountering uh, any or had to use them. No, so that said, I have used touchscreen computers with Windows 8 and 8.1, and the 8.1 part of that makes no difference. It, it's about the same experience. Uh, uh, allegedly, it was supposed to be a fixed update, so it would improve things that would that, that weren't right with Windows 8, and I don't think it really does. Um, now, how do you think Windows 8.1 compares to the um, 8, 10, or 10, 8 to 10.9 OS 10 release? Anyone? No? No, no thoughts. I don't really have thoughts. No, okay. Well, I I think it's um a no much... pointer exception. Uh, okay, well I think um you're gonna get a seg fault, and I think I think eight one was much more uh, of a letdown than than a ten eight to ten nine. I think ten eight to ten nine was a much better update because it it became free and that was an easy thing they could tout, which is pretty important for OS ten. Well, well as as was the eight to eight point one thing. It was free. Yeah, that was free. But on the other hand, 8.1 added features that nobody was asking for, where 10.8 to 10.9... Like, like, a, like a start menu free start button? Right. Uh, did that? Did they actually add a uh, start button? Yes. But did it actually do something different? No. So uh, that there wasn't really much there. And then uh, let's, let's talk about the events in the fall. What events happened in the fall? Well... I think there's another Apple one that came. A up. lot of Apple ones. Two Apple events, actually. I know. They're, yeah. What? Well, we have the uh, the big event for the iPad Airs, and we also had the one for the phones. And so, what what happened with the phones this year? Something unusual happened with the uh, well, they iPhones. They split their line. They split their line. Yeah. What did they split into? Well, they have the five um, S, which we all knew was coming, and then they had the shock to the world, the five C. Which is funny. So, what did we think the five C was going to do? Be cheaper. Cheaper. And faster. So we 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 all thought that the C version would be their prepaid market version, so that it would be you know three hundred to three fifty three hundred fifty dollars, something that normal people could afford, you know, without a contract. And we were wrong. Really, what the five C was was it was really just a regular iPhone five, but with a different case, and they sold it at you know last year's unit price. So. There was nothing special about the 5C except that it had a color option. Everything else about it was identical. What was the feature about the 5S? It came with a cool case with holes in it. And 5S. Oh, uh, 5S uh, Siri. That was new, wasn't it? No, no, it wasn't no, new. No, no, no. Try a different. Try a different S word. Um, maps. Sync. Sync. No, no, no. Fingerprints doesn't start with S, so I don't really know what the S is for this year. But fingerprint scanner. Security. Scanner. SS. Insecure. Okay, so they added a fingerprint scanner to the 5S. What do you think about that? Um, you know, what if I lost my fingers and I still want to make a phone call to get help? Well, I hope you don't put a lock screen on your phone then because you're going to die. Yeah, I don't think I'd ever put that on my phone. You don't have to, do you? What if, no, what you if don't. Someone, what if someone broke into my database and stole my fingerprints? Uh, apparently they're encrypted, but nobody believes them. It, it's so the encrypted. Like I said, it's apparently encrypted, but nobody believes them. So there were other things that happened throughout the year, but they weren't really events. Like, so the Nexus 5 was just randomly launched in the fall in, um, late October. Nobody, like, had an event for it. Nobody, they had no plans for it. It just happened. Uh, you know, there's, there was, um. There, there was a blog post, probably. Yeah, but there were, that's not an event. That's just a blog post. The Play Store touted it. Oh, the Play Store touted it. And of course, uh, you know, I think that... Well, that, that's how Google touts everything these days. Yeah, that's how they're doing it. That's the model they're moving towards now. Um, and and an wasn't, didn't, that one, didn't that one hurricane come through and they were supposed to do something? And that was last year. Blog post? That was last year, actually. That was with the uh, Nexus 4 launch last year. Um, and that, that's... Ah, so, so, so they did... 
the five one, so that's better than the four. Right, so that's what they're probably going to now. Since since they still got just as much media attention without an event, they decided now it's cheaper not to do an event. By far, yeah. Yeah. So they could do. So the next, next year, year we can look forward to the Nexus Six. The year after that, we can look forward to the new Nexus Seven. <laughs> yes, that that is going to be a problem. <laughs> that that's going to be an amazing year. I can't wait. Twenty fifteen. Here we come. So why don't we talk about some hardware releases? Yeah, I heard um, they didn't have events, but there were things that came out. So what were some of these things? Well, uh, so was it uh, once upon a time there is a Kickstarter for this Android-based console called the Ouya, and apparently that happened this year. I think the dev kits got shipped out, although I uh, and then it actually officially went on sale. Yeah, it went and on sale in June, I think. And it's sort of you know not really done much. No, it's it's been very low profile. Nobody's really talking about it. Now, some of the specs on the Ouya were really disappointing, so it had a Tiger 3, which was the same processor that was released a summer earlier in the uh, Nexus 7 original generation. So you know, it was a kind of poor product to begin with. And then, allegedly, it was supposed to be available in Targets and in Walmarts across the United States. I never saw that. I've never seen it in Target, and I've been to quite a number of them. And I've never seen an Ouya. I, I have in never person. I've never seen one personally in person either. It's pretty bad. Although I, I so, we we know somebody who has one, so that that's good enough. Who? Max. The Marty? Mm-hmm. Oh. Surprise. So then uh you know, along with uh you know that hardware Kickstarter, uh at some point there was also something called an Oculus Rift. And uh you know, people have been getting excited about that. And uh apparently the dev kits for that also shipped out, but it hasn't actually been released yet. But everyone's still getting hyped up about it anyway, including our own Buckface. So, do, what do you think about the Oculus Rift? Like, so there's there's two little screens of relatively low resolution. What do you think about it right now? I would never go for it. Um, I'd hold off. Yeah, I would too. So, I mean, I mean, uh, it, it, it's promising, but it's not ready yet. Uh, neither of you can. I don't know. Uh, neither something. Neither new. of you can. Neither of you can uh, see this, but you know I'm looking at three 24 inch monitors here, so you know I want to at least get my use out of these. Um, and uh, like pretty much like the next step for me would probably be like uh, 120 hertz panels, mm-hmm. uh, rather than like a head mounted display or even 4K. I don't know. I think I might you prefer. Be that guy. I might prefer the 4K honestly here. For me, anyway. So, but, uh, yeah, like, the uh, current 4K monitors are, you know, 30 inches or more. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if, if they could, you know, squeeze that down into a really, you know, high-density, say, 24-inch display or so, uh, that would be really great. I think they'll get there eventually, but right now, Apple hasn't made a cheap one yet, so... Everybody else has to be more expensive. Because, you know, occasionally, you know, I like to, you know, play with my friends. And, you know, I lug my desktop over. And 24 inches seems to be a little over the optimal size of carrying monitors around. Yeah, probably. Um, you could do but, it. But it's still on the low side of this is still practical. Right. You know, whereas, you know, like a 30-inch monitor in your face, yeah, that gets kind of huge. You actually have to move your neck a little bit. Well, doesn't Ian Buck uh, have the 3D 30-inch monitor? Or is it 27? I don't remember. I 20, think it's 27. 27. Yeah. So he has a 3D monitor. I don't think I would need a 3D monitor. I would much prefer 4K resolution over 3D. Um, would you prefer the increased refresh rate? Doubt it. I would just so. like one that didn't have lines in it. Oh, yeah, well, of course you would. Mine's just, you know, them lines come to you. Those vertical lines, no less. So uh, we also have the Moto X. That came out this uh, summer. Yeah, and also this year they have the slimmer version of it. Really? The Moto G. The Moto G, you call that slimmer. It's actually bigger, physically. But it does less. I know. So it has to be smaller and crappier. It's not necessarily true. That's how I envision it. So what was the Moto X's big gimmick? A gimmick? Yeah. Sales point, you mean? Okay, fine. What was the Moto X sales it point? To represent you. If you wanted black headphones, you could get them. If you wanted rainbow polka dot things, you could get them. If you wanted cool purple volume rockers, they're purple. So you're telling me that you could customize them? 
Exactly. Yeah, so that was uh, a selling point, but not not initially because it was only locked down to AT and T. So that was kind of a kind it's of still for Verizon too. Yeah, so now it's all for all carriers now. So that's good. Uh, we didn't know what the exclusivity deal would be on that, so it's good that it ended by the end of this year. Um, but the hardware and software features on the Moto X, what were those? Oh, the half light so that you could light half of the screen mm-hmm. to save power and push notifications. So it was, it was kind of cool. So active dis- active display that was uh, what they were calling it, and it, that's pretty pretty neat idea because it was using um, OLED screens instead of LCD s- screens. It could light up selective pixels without using the whole backlight. So that was uh, pretty nice. And you could. It also had the always listening. Ability yes, with always this listening. Low Snapdragon. So you could. Well, allegedly. Yeah. You could uh, say OK Google and, or it, actually it was OK Google now on um, the Moto X and it would just uh, work. It would it would be always listening to you, and it also had the shake to launch camera feature, which everybody loves so much. That I still like it better than your chop chop. The, the chop 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 was fake. Yeah, but. You tried. I did try. Mm-hmm. What else uh, came out? Well, um, people actually got their Glass. Google Glass. Google Glass this year, yes. And um, we also got to chase a guy around Target because he had it. That's true. We chased a guy around Target who had Google Glass. I remember that. It was a lot of fun. So uh, what do we know about Google Glass? Well, we know that the people who bought it kind of liked it just to know what time it was. So how much do you, do you remember how much you had to pay for Google? 1500? 1500, yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. And and you actually had to go somewhere in person. They couldn't just send it to you. Yeah, so there were three places I believe. I know I know one in, was in New York and I think one was in like Mountain View on campus and then maybe another one somewhere else in California. So there weren't really too many options and it would have cost you $2000. Yeah, they really are. So has Glass made a big wave? A big wave of controversy about how it's not that good. Well, what's wrong with it? Well, it doesn't do anything yet. Besides tell you the things that your phone can do it if you just stick your phone on your pocket. A lot of people take pictures with it. A lot of people really like taking video and pictures. Yeah, they go it. to the bathroom and they take the pictures of other people's ding-dongs at the urinals. and it's, it's, Does that uh, actually happen? Uh, um, it's Polsky it's conceivable. It is very conceivable. I agree. Well, you know, there's a lot of restaurants that have banned the use of Google Glass because they don't want people taking pictures um, in the restaurants, and and so, uh, do you do you think the future is is going to have a lot of that well, wearable technology restrictions? Well, I mean, I hear this happens all the time, but people take pictures of their food with their with their phones and put them on like Instagram or whatever. Yeah, that apparently does happen all the time. Apparently, yeah. apparently, Instagram is like a menu of food or something. Pretty close. I have to get on that then, because uh, that sounds amazing. So there were a lot of uh, phones this year. Uh, I should probably get on that since I'm the proprietor of the food show. You are. You should get on that. Yeah, and make something more delicious than your quail plant, wa- quail plant waffles. Yeah, a little bit. Well, that and, is Chris's doing. Well, oh. and so if you do make some food and you do need to take a picture of it, you might want to try one of these amazing phones that came out this year. And among these was uh, the Nexus 5 also. And so we had the Xperia Z, which was Sony's flagship phone for this year. Apparently, it's pretty good. Uh, the Z Ultra has absurd battery life. Um, you know, Sony makes great lenses for for their equipment, and somehow they um, put it on their phones. Mm-hmm. You have the Note 3, which was Sony's second flagship phone, in addition to their first, the S4. So do you remember the S4 announcement, the S4 event? Not really, actually. Yeah, I don't really remember it either. We decided not really to cover it. Because it was pretty distasteful, uh, wasn't very interesting. Uh, the S4 wasn't different enough than the S3 in most people's eyes to make it worthwhile to note. How ironic that the Note 3 then came out and everybody loved it. it they also, fun. they yeah, they also have the HTC One, which everybody loved because it had front-facing speakers and it was made out of aluminum. You know, uh, everybody raved that HTC had met a level of design that would even be Apple class. And then the G2 came out. Which, yes, which the was G2. right before the Nexus 5. Right, and so that the G2 is the, the was fastest the, for a while, Android mm-hmm. style. And and so the Note 3, I think, is the fastest now, but it's cheating because it's so much bigger. They can have the clock speed way higher. Yeah, yeah, uh, dissipating heat or something apparently. And so the G2, what's unique about the G2? Well, it's huge. And it's expensive, and it's bloody fast, 
Well, and the real the unique nice, points, nice screen. The, the the real unique points of the G2 is what they did with the buttons. Do you know what they did with the buttons? They got rid of them. They got rid of them from the sides, and what they did is they put them on the back, right below the camera. And there's three buttons. There's you know volume up and down and power. And it's just really bizarre where they put those buttons. I, I don't think I could deal with a phone with buttons on the back. We'll see if they do it again for the G. So uh, apparently the G3 will be coming out very soon at MWDC or MWC, no D, uh, in uh, March. So you can look forward to that. I shall. Mm-hmm. Uh, what other uh, reading devices came out? Oh, um, a new line of fires came out along with a new paper white. Oh, so tell me about those. Well, the paper white um, is, you know, not very interesting. They, this one does have the backlight, and mm-hmm. they took away the speakers, and they started taking away some of the features that are so loved in the third gen Kindle. But they did make it cheaper, which is nice. Yes, they did. So I think it's ninety nine dollars now. Yes, and Amazon also launched a campaign where, since Amazon started like forever ago, if you bought a book for a dollar ninety nine or some menial amount, you could buy that book for the Kindle. So you could re-bring back your library right so the 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 the, it was a pretty good idea so they were matching their they were making a service very similar to their music matching service so if you ever bought an album or a song well i guess just an album in this case so if you ever bought a physical cd ever ever in the lifetime of amazon you could just download for free the mp3 album which is a pretty good deal and that was released this year i think too and then they matched yeah i yeah, I went on Amazon like some like about two months or so after they did that. And I'm like, oh, I have MP3s in my account. It's like, okay, why would I ever use these? I ripped these to flack and like lossless yeah. a while ago. Mm-hmm. It's still a Which, nice gesture though. Most people don't yeah. know what flack is, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And so the fires had a new feature uh, yeah. announced with them, and that is the Mayday. Mm-hmm. Like you push a button, and a live tech support will help you within twenty seconds or something. Yeah, and so uh, that's a pretty big order for them. So from what I've heard, you know, so it was just Christmas this past week, and um, I what I heard is a lot of Kindles Kindle Fires were activated over Christmas more than more than iPads by double. Um, which is due in part to how cheap they are. Do you remember what the pricing was on those Kindle Fires? Oh, I think on one seventy nine for the cheapest one. That's yeah. not a Kindle Fire HDX though. What are the HDX running? I think one ninety nine. Let's go to the Amazon. So I know one one is like three seventy nine, and the other one is probably like two fifty or something. Like the pricing is really good and really aggressive for an eight inch tablet. Uh, Amazon is really doing a really good job at that. But on the other hand, they don't run stock Android or any kind of known Android. They're using their own Fire OS, which is what they're calling it. And they even gave it a ver- uh, code name this year. Do you remember what the code name was? No. It was what? Mojito. Yeah, so you can get the all-new Kindle Fire 7 tablet um, now in HD for 139 hmm. And that one does not come with the thing. Yeah, okay, you, here it is. HDX has come with it. Customer support with the Mayday, you have to spend two twenty nine. Yeah, that's not too bad. Two twenty nine. That's that's the Nexus Seven quality. Yeah. Well, you know, we should probably mention the Nexus Seven that came out this summer too. It did. And uh, so, what was the um, big thing with the new Nexus Seven? It, in my point, they ruined the back. I loved the fake plasticky back that it came with. What about their point? What was their point? I didn't hear it. Well, I don't know either. I don't know if they really had a marketing gimmick with the new Nexus Seven. So the screen improved a little bit. It went from its 240 or so resolution DPI to, uh, you know, iPhone equivalent at, you know, 329. That's pretty good, but it's not, not something normal people will notice or appreciate. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's faster. It's using an S4 Pro, so it's using the same processor that's in the Nexus 4. So that's good, but it's not like a Snapdragon 600 or an 800, so that's bad. So Everyone likes 800. Mm-hmm. So what other uh, weird things came out this year in hardware? Well, two new things, uh, both of them from Can Nintendo. Can you speak into the Microsoft? Yes, pretty much am. <laughs> am I turned down or something? No. Ryan seems so much louder. I'm sp- I'm right here. Either hmm. way, so two new things happened. Um, so we have the new version of the DS, and this is the first one that they've made that doesn't clamshell. So it's funny that it's even called a DS. What is it really called? I forget its name. It's a 2DS. Oh, it's a 2DS. So there's 3DS 2DS. and a 2DS. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's a very clever naming convention. So what does it look like? 
Well, it's really thick, it's really huge, and I don't know how anyone with hands can use them. So it's it's basically a big slab. So if you've ever held a rock before, that's what it's like. Yeah. And they also re-released the original Wii. With really? Without Wi-Fi and without a bunch of other features, and only for $100. So what are they calling that Wii? Wii Mini, I don't know. Yeah, I think it is called the Wii Mini, which is kind of funny. So what, what do you think that product was aimed at? Well... My Wii is just about dead. Mm-hmm. Like the, it, you always had problems with your Wii because you got that first generation. I one. have the original batch of a couple thousand. Like um, nice, and it's just been. I I can't play any like Super Smash Brothers Brawl. All those dual layer discs, none of them work. Like it was just super buggy. Um, I could have sent it in to have it fixed, but because it was one of the originals, the homebrew channel worked incredibly well, and so I kind of just found Pirate Bay and went to my brother's house with fast internet and have copies of all these great games. Well, and I and I know you could have sent your Wii back in to get them to fix it, but it wasn't a very you know appealing option. Yeah, and they did send us uh, new straps because people were right. going into TVs. Yeah. Uh, so you, you could probably pick up one used for like 50 bucks or so. Really, you probably could. Yeah, but it also came with a Wiimote, which I don't know how much a Wiimote cost. Like back in the day, it was 40 bucks. Oh, yeah. And with a nunchuck. So it comes with a nunchuck, a Wiimote, and a copy of Mario Kart. Not too bad. Too bad you know, do you still get Wii Sports with it? I don't know, but no. that must be a 20-cent game now. I didn't know you could actually buy it. I thought it was always just bundled with the system. Because Wii Sports is a good game. So Forza Motorsports 2 was bundled with the Xbox 360. Mm-hmm. That game is like a dollar. And okay. there's so many copies floating around then. the used market. Mm-hmm. So um, tell me about an unreleased phone. Oh, this is this is one of my favorite stories of the year because it's a, about a failure. So the Ubuntu committee decided to make their own phone, and Shuttleworth decided that he would call it chamfered edges with sapphire and yeah, all these he, other things and would, all these adjectives that only a Brit could describe. Really? Well, he really did go on and on about how amazing the hardware would be. You know, it had four gigabytes of memory. Mm-hmm. It would be using the latest processor, which would be a Snapdragon 800. Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. And it didn't actually work. No, Not enough so... people backed it, and they didn't make it. So do you remember how much the campaign was asking they for? Were, they wanted $24 million. Uh, was, was it 20 I, I felt like it was like in the 30s. Um, Maybe that's what they got. I can't recall. You know, it was a lot of money that, that Canonical was It was impossible. For. Yeah. And, and it was it, they really didn't have uh, enough time for – in 30 days, I don't think they could have done it. If they had been asking for a whole year, maybe they would have got there. But do you remember what he wanted it to be like? He wanted it to be like the Formula One phone of the phone market. And that never happened. No, and I, I don't know if that's a bad thing either. I, I feel like the premium phones that we have now are very much like those Formula One phones that you can buy. Like the Moto G is a regular person's car as a phone, whereas an HTC One would be a, you know, fancy car. Yeah. So, yeah, they were asking, like, what, $32 million for that? Mm-hmm. Um, I know of a crowdfunding campaign that's been going for over a year and has just hit $35 million. Yeah. So they were sort of shooting high there. Mm-hmm. So, hey, uh, speaking of failures, uh, did anyone actually have any hardware failures this year? Mm. I I actually had a failure this year. Um, so the school, the college that I went to, uh, was you know essentially just all programming, mm-hmm. and in order to guarantee everyone a, a good shot, they gave everyone uh, IBM ThinkPads. I love those. And so uh, the series that was given to my uh, entry class was like the Z61s, and which are a piece of crap. And my Z61 uh, failed on me back in October. Oh no! While I while I was observing International Backup Awareness Day. Of course. Did you lose anything so, then? Uh, no, I was actually at an off-site location uh, doing a transfer, and I was able to. Let's see, I also have my desktop there, so I was also able to, you know, like pick up where it left off. Nice. So, uh, with a little bit of uh, USB booting into Linux uh, voodooism. So, um, did anybody's motherboard catch fire? Uh, yes, I know somebody's motherboard who did catch fire, and that was uh, Ian Buck's motherboard. Do you I thought what... that was last time. Oh, uh, I don't know. That was this year, I think. I think that was this year. Because we met his friend. Yeah. 
and his friend. Yeah. About uh, him. So yeah, like apparently it was like caught fire or something. Well, apparently they were adding a fan. Like the computer was just fine, and they wanted to add a fan. And and I don't know where they plugged this fan into, but apparently it caused the motherboard to catch fire. Which I don't know how that's even possible, but it happened. Yeah, I don't believe that. Um, and I I guess. I I don't know what 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 year that was, but was that last year? Or was that this year when I broke my server's drive by Taking accidentally it. unplugging it? Well, it the way you unplugged it. So I would have been surprised if something <laughs> didn't break. <laughs> so you pulled the cable and you kicked it forward. No, I did not. It so, tumbled uh, out of its holding. No, center. that did not happen. So the 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 server, as as you might know, is just a computer in the other room, and it was just sitting there peacefully. And then I needed to move the uh, I don't know storage rack that was behind the server, and that somebody, some horrible human being, decided to place the power strip on the other side of the rack. So I couldn't unplug it without moving the power strip first. So. Somehow, when I lifted the leg of the storage tower up, the uh, power switch on the power strip flipped, and after turning the server back on, there was no more operating system and not many files nearby. <laughs> yeah. But I did recover bad. everything I ever lost on that drive, so that's not a big deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Very, very, very good. And, and so now yeah. the, uh, the drive um, paints itself on the other two drives every few hours. So hopefully that will save you. It it might, but it probably won't. So um, uh, didn't you like drill a hole through a motherboard? Yeah, we, we did do that this year. We mounted, we made solar flare. Solar flare. Oh, that was normal procedure though. That so that wasn't fishy. No, it wasn't fishy at all. But we did we did uh basically. Um, no, not really. I mean, drilling a hole through a motherboard sounds extremely fishy. Well, it was just a little. I had to. It wasn't a clean hole. It was like one of the screw holes that I just had to remount a little. Yeah. And well, and and he glued it to a piece hot of wood. Glue. Yeah, he likes hot glue. He Laminate flooring, and yes, glued it to a piece of wood, and uh, yeah, that became solar flare. It was actually pretty cool for a while. We had it running on the table. It you know it, it worked. And then I built the more powerful nuck. Right. Um. What he calls <laughs> a nuck is not a nuck at all. It is for me. Yeah, for it's you. The closest thing I'm going to get to a, a nook. nook. No, no, it's not missing corners. So it's missing an entire case. Okay, passive airflow, best thing you can do for a computer. Not really. Uh, so do you want to talk about some uh, software releases? No, nah, yeah. software didn't come out this year. Yeah, a little bit of software did. Like, we've already mentioned, you know, all the big operating systems, but there were little smaller ones, too. So, uh, you know, iOS 7 came out this year, and then... In the Android department, the uh, Jelly Jelly Bean 4.3, another Jelly Bean came out this year. What do you think of that? I love Jelly Bean. So how many versions of Jelly Bean was that? Three. Three versions, yes. That's, it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty heavily cited there. And we don't really know why they did that. But we do know that they broke their cycle. They did break their cycle with a copyrighted name that was owned by Nestle. Nestle, And that was? Key Lime Pie. Nope. Kit Kat, all the, you know, so they had been calling it Key Lime Pie internally uh, the whole time, and they were just waiting for the final confirmation from Nestle that it would be okay to use. And uh, there was supposed to be this big campaign where there would be Kit Kat bars you could buy and then win an X of seven or Google Play credit. What happened to that? We've never seen it anywhere in Minnesota um, or in, in general anywhere. I thought it was going to well, be a huge rollout. I know. Well, then, then again, uh, Nestle does Kit Kat everywhere except the U.S., where inside the U.S. is Hershey. Okay, well, it, it, they still didn't do it here because it was uh, both parties that were involved. So, yeah, and I, I love the, uh, the Nestle website that essentially marketed Kit Kats as a smartphone. Well, so in that, in that, and, and it's actually funny you say that it marketed it as a smartphone because if you look at that website, the way they constructed it. It was modeled heavily after the Mac Pro demo page from Apple in the summer. So that's kind of funny, too. Uh, so what other games came out this year that were notable? Well, uh, if you ask Buckface, uh, apparently he likes uh, some games called Bioshock Infinite and Gone Home. You see, I've, uh, heard, either of those? I've heard of Bioshock Infinite. I watched a little bit of gameplay from it. I've not heard of Gone Home, so I don't know. 
Um, apparently, you play this one chick that goes home from college and finds everything, like, her entire family just missing. At least it isn't about zombies, which is all I ask. Yeah, he yes. likes zombies. And, I hate zombies. And as for Bioshock Infinite, I remember getting the first Bioshock, and I remember everyone saying that, oh, this is such a great RPG, this is such a fantastic RPG, and coming off of Elder Scrolls IV, I'm like, hey, I might want to check this out at some point, so I got it. And I found a shooter and not an RPG. Mm-hmm. So that sort of, like, soured my whole opinion of the entire franchise. Yeah. That's pretty bad. So... So, yeah, and I also have this nasty habit of buying the first game in a franchise and not buying any of the sequels. Oh, I have I have the exact opposite habit. I buy all the games and then just not play them. Well, me too, but that's not exactly the opposite problem. Okay, fine. So, anyways, the games that I played and really liked, uh, the uh, growing chronologically, uh, would be Blood Dragon. Uh, yeah, I heard far- about that. The uh, Far Cry 3 little spinoff. I know people like to call it DLC, but it, it's not DLC. Yeah, I, I I know it's not DLC because I almost want it. Because, you know, this is you don't have to have anything other Far Cry 3 in order to play this. Right. And it's it's totally not based on the Far Cry stuff. Right. Uh, what they did was they took a lot of the assets, like namely like the land mm-hmm. and... Uh, uh, like some of the gameplay stuff, and they also, you know, threw in a few more things and uh, made a completely different game that's modeled after uh, 80s action you know, sci-fi stuff. And it is uh, freaking awesome. And if you like shooters, if you like uh, interesting takes on games and satire and, like, a whole bunch of references that you don't need to know what it's referencing in order to laugh at it, do get this. Well, in general, it's kind of a parody on gaming as it is traditionally. It, it's it's supposed to be a fun game, so that that's nice. Yes. It's not serious, it, which is why I like it. Yes, that too. Um, the other game I liked, along with my uh, former co-host, was HOTS. And you might ask, what's that? That's StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm. That's what I was uh, this, going to say. How did I know that? The, this is the uh, second campaign of the StarCraft II trilogy. Um, so this, unlike the uh, first uh, installment, which followed the Terran campaign with uh, Raynor, uh, this uh, installment follows Kerrigan and, like, pretty much her, uh, you know, humanity and you know her conscience as uh, you know as she re- retakes control of the Zerg swarms, and uh, uh, it's. It's definitely a little bit different than traditional uh, StarCraft uh, gameplay goes. Uh, I think they borrowed a lot from the uh, a lot of the MOBA games going around in that you essentially control Kerrigan as your hero for like pretty much every mission. Um, the uh, storyline's good, although uh, I've noticed with both the uh, StarCraft II campaigns that it essentially borrows... Uh, a lot from the first games. It's like a sort of like a retelling of the first uh, game, uh, rather than necessarily building upon it. So that that whole MOBA genre, it seems like it never existed before this year. But I guess I don't get out a lot. Like well, it seems pretty new. Well, it's. I think it's only been in the past three years that they've become really popular, mm-hmm. and uh, these games are specifically Dota, Dota Two, uh, LOL. Uh, See, yeah, that's League of Legends. Yeah. Uh, and you know, like it, pretty much everyone is getting into uh, this. It seems it suddenly just came on the scene, and it's really big. Yeah. And I think a lot of that has to do with it being pretty much all of them being free to play. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So, um, the third game that came out this year that I also played this year uh, was the Stanley Parable, and this is. Like sort of a like another short game, uh, you know, as as you sort of said with uh, Blood Dragon, that it is a satire of gaming itself. Mm-hmm. Um, this is like more of an in depth thing. It analyzes you know the actions of the player and you know how it interacts with you know the story that is meant to be told in a game. Uh, and it's it's not action based at all. You just play a guy that's walking around an office building. 
uh, wondering where all of his co-workers went and why they haven't showed up for today. Um, and you know, it's really simplistic on the outside, but the commentary is just pure gold um, in that, you know, this is, you know, what the narrator says. There is a narrator, by the way. Um, and, you know, you can you can purposely do the opposite of what he says. And, uh, you know, if you keep on doing that, uh, then, you know, funny stuff happens, I guess. Um, this is... Uh, there also was a mod uh, that came out a, a few years ago that was based upon the Source Engine and used a lot of the Half-Life 2 assets... Um, which I really enjoyed. You know, it it sort of portrayed a rather bleak existence for, for this guy, and you know, I think that the Half Life Two assets sort of uh, you know fed into that. Uh, but this version is completely new, and you know, it's you know sort of bright uh, by comparison. Um, they also have a demo, which uh, somehow does not contain any of the uh, any of the content from the actual game itself. Like, the demo is also a commentary on game demos. That's kind of funny. So, uh, I, I really enjoyed all three of those. Uh, but most of the games that I've played this year are uh, older games for uh, any N number of reasons. Right. Uh, which we will get into later. Yes, there's one big reason, too. So, um, let's see. Another software release that came out this year was uh, the Toilet Engine, uh, which is my blog that I use. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't really updated the uh, the GitHub of late, uh, but that's okay because I'm about to release a new version that uh, has an updated Markdown engine in it. That's even better. So, so how was your transition from not Markdown to Markdown been? Uh, it's actually been pretty good. Um, like for instance, I'm writing a lot less HTML in my posts, um, but you know, moving to this you know improved engine that's you know, suddenly I won't have to, you know, do all the ugly stuff for tables or even uh, delete uh, elements. I, but, I, uh, I was just reading uh, the comment that I left on your toilet blog engine post. I do have to leave one minor troll. It's WordPress, not WordPress. Oh, I also like my favorite method is kill in honey. Apparently, you have a method called kill in honey. Yes, I uh, have... I sort of built a, a analytics engine and a uh, like a rate limiter engine. Mm-hmm. Very wise of you. Uh, and uh, you know also uh, honey pots, which the honey is pots are kill, the best. Yes, in which kill in honey is uh, what happens when someone comes to my blog and tries to request a PHP thing. Well, that's very wise because you don't run PHP, so that's great. So I mean, unless I uh, write a blog post that somehow ends in .php. Don't do it. Uh, it it seems like uh, you know pretty much all the bots that go around and try to request like every single version of uh, PHP my admin yep. like the login page mm-hmm. and that always ends in like something .php. Mm-hmm. So I'm like I'm not running this crap ban. Yep. Uh, that's great. So uh, why don't we talk also... about some other things too? Like what other things? Oh, r- well, um well, uh, raspberry. 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 Yes. Was this the year of the raspberry? Um, sort of. It was the year that they finally sold a million units. Nice. That's quite a few. Yes. So, uh, uh, so if you uh, didn't realize that I am also the host of another uh, Nexus TV podcast called Control Structure. And uh, you know, uh, you know, just you know, whatever websites I frequent, you know, generally had some sort of thing revolving around a Raspberry Pi. And well, what if I got one right here? Wow, you of have course. one right there. Mm-hmm. So yes, I finally uh, bit the bit the bullet and bought one of these around March or so. Cool. And uh, you know, it's unfortunately it's pretty much being used as I anticipated. And by being used, I mean being not used. Yeah, see, it's kind of slow and it's kind of useless, as imagined. Yeah, Sam bought one and he never figured out how to install anything on it. Yeah, well, I mean, what else? What can you really do with it? Um, I mean, I know Andrew ran some benchmarking on it. So, um, 
you can run uh, DOSBox on it. Uh, so like some really old, uh, you know, DOS games. Um, you can, uh, you know, apparently do a whole bunch of uh, automation with it. And I also, uh, on a Kickstarter this year, also uh, got into something called a Brick Pie, uh, which is essentially an interface for the Pie to uh, control the uh, Lego Mindstorms uh, stuff. Cool. That's probably more useful. Yeah. So, um, you know, I can essentially have a robot if I wanted to just, you know, randomly coming around my apartment. Mm -hmm. So... And I was, you know, sort of discussing this with a friend in that, uh, you know, it's like, well, I could probably put stick a webcam on it and then, like, have some sort of sophisticated image processing thing that it could actually build a model of whatever area it was in, although I have no clue of how to, you know, begin to work on that. Um, and then he's like, well, the Raspberry Pi is kind of slow, so you might want to, you know, do processing elsewhere. And it's like... Or it could have like a Wi-Fi uh, oh, interface man, on it, that's gonna and suck. then I could have then I could have something running on my uh, server in mm -hmm. here, so it'd be cloud robotics. That'd be cool, but that would suck to write. So, but uh, yeah, the uh, the ideas abound. That is a pretty uh, cool idea, actually. Uh, but not, it, but unfortunately, not implementations. Yeah, no, it's a lot of work. So, well, tell us um, about your bigger computer. Uh, yes, a, a much bigger computer. So, uh, uh, once upon a time, my uncle died about two or so years ago. And uh, my dad said, hey, you want to go out and see what you can get? And so went out there and pulled two rather old computers out. And I decided that it's finally time to do something with, uh, with those. So I got the uh, perhaps the more decrepit of the two up and running uh, because that's the first one that I tried. Um, so I have a Pentium 2 uh, running uh, nice. that happened about, was it about two months ago? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I've, I've you know, with all the talk about Windows 8 and whatnot, I've uh, gone back to Windows 98 uh, with this. Uh, so, you know, I'm just, you know, enjoying how things were about 15 years ago. So how, uh, how were they 15 years ago? Uh, things were not much different. Oh, of, course they, of course, they looked different, and uh, things were a bit slower. Uh, but, you know, this is a Pentium 2, and I have an i7, mm -hmm. so I'm not exactly asking it to do the big boy computer things. Right. So what games have so, you been playing on the, the 20th century computer? Yes. Uh, the... The loving name that I gave to it because it essentially is, you know, from the 20th century. Um, so yeah, I pretty much started out with uh, Sim City 2000, uh, which was the first game that I remember uh, binging on, and I'm not sure how many thousands of hours that I've played Sim City 2000. Uh, then uh, moving on, uh, skipping genres a little bit, I played Earth Siege 2, uh, which is a mech game. Uh, from about 1995 or so. Um, uh, from there, I played Road Rash, uh, which is a fun motorcycle racing game, uh, street racing game that is. And I always remember, I always remember playing it at said uncle's house uh, back in the 90s. Uh, but I never actually got the full version of it, so I went on eBay and uh, got that for like 10 bucks. You got a real copy of it? That's amazing. Yes, that worked, what? no less. It did. Um, so yeah, I've uh, also been you know playing other games on it too. Um, it was maybe two or three weeks ago that a website called Good Old Games uh, uh, realized that the uh, franchise ownership of Fallout was going to change hands, and they didn't know whether they were going to be able to continue selling that or not. Uh, so they decided for two days to. Uh, Sell it for the low, low price of free. It's pretty and good. As you can, as you can imagine, the internet showed up and totally crashed them to hell. Um, but uh, fortunately, a few hours later, when I got home, I was able to get uh, the Fallout, Fallout Two, and Fallout Tactics games uh, without issue, and it even maxed out my uh, FiOS connection. Uh, well, that's saying something then. 
So I'm sort of working my way through uh, the first one of those. So, and you know, you may remember Windows 98 being notoriously unstable and whatnot uh, back in the day, but I really haven't done much with it. You know, I'm not using a printer or anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, it hasn't uh, blue screened on me like since I got it running. The less drivers you need, the better. It's yes. Good for even computers these days. Yeah, true. So the uh, sound drivers are particularly uh, nasty. Mm-hmm. So I hear. So yeah, I've been uh, having fun with that, and you know, you know, it's great that I got this uh, this computer up and running. But I also wanted to go all out. So I also have a CRT monitor that I've hooked up to this. And how big is and, that? And uh, I think I had a 15 inch CRT. What does it And weigh? over over Thanksgiving, I went to a friend's house that had a bunch of CRTs lying around and got a 17-inch one. Must weigh I think a ton. This is. It weighs a lot. Yeah. Um, so uh, I also have a mouse with a ball in it, although that uh, has more issues than normal ball mice did back in the day, so I'm not using it right now. Um, and if I ever find one of those, like a crappy pair of speakers that generally were like bolted onto the side of uh, monitors mm-hmm. like they were back in the 90s. I'll get a pair of those too if I uh, get the energy to do so. So I am going all out. So yeah, not only do I, ha- do I have the hardware, I also want the peripherals to it as well. That's good. You need the full experience. Yes. Mm-hmm. So uh, enough about all the old stuff. Um, so I also... Uh, before we move on, I also, in proud Nexus.tv tradition, I have also run the war game on both of these systems, uh, both the Raspberry Pi and 20th Century. Um, although, for, although for 20th Century, I did have to rebuild it to be compatible with Java 1.5, oh. the, last, the last edition, uh, last release that, was, uh, that could run on Windows 98. So, what did, so what did, what, uh, who won? Uh, the Pentium 2 won. That's not a uh, big by, surprise. By about 20 times. Um, apparently, the optimization for Java on these ARM chips is not great. Um, so, yeah, and also along with, you know, old versions of Java, I have an old version of Firefox on here, and uh, also Winamp 2, the last release mm. of Winamp 2 series. Uh, I think the newest ver- version... Of any software I have on here is uh, Irfan View, uh, which is you know just an image viewer yep. that I also use on my desktop that is currently maintained. So, anyways, uh, let's move forward uh, a decade or two. A, a decade or two. Well, why don't we start with uh, Matt's first real, not horrible smartphone? Well, that would be the year and a half old Nexus Four. Uh, it actually, you know, it's a surprising device. You know, even though it's a year and a, a year and a little bit old, it still feels this year's. Now, what's amazing is that it happened on four computers simultaneously. <laughs> and you know who it's going to be, right? It's Same. going. It's go- yep. Guess what? Oh, and you know what he said? What? GW. Well, tell him to go grip himself because we're doing a show. Uh, uh, but the Nexus Four. It's just about the greatest thing I've ever held, compared to phone-wise. I mean, I've yeah. held better things. Right, right. Um, but so let's start with your old phone. What was your old phone? Well, it was an LG Optimus Elite, a uh, very, very proper and basic phone. So, you know, the Optimus Elite was, you know, $130, I think, at launch. Yes. Mm, I think it was, I don't know. I ended up paying about 100 flat for it. Okay, so at Best Buy. that's why I'm saying 130 at launch. I think it was more than that at launch. Oh, okay. I think it was 160 something. Virgin Mobile overinflation. Everywhere. Yeah. Um, and so it was a nice phone when you got it, but it was running 2.3, which was kind of old because 4 had already old. been old. Um, but I had Flash, and you all didn't. I had Flash on the original Nexus 4. However, I got rid of it. Oh. Yeah. Well, I don't have Flash anymore, and I miss it. But I did have Flash on my uh, gingerbread. Um, but the world's moved on, mm-hmm. um, and having a Nexus 4 has made my life the most awesomest thing in the world. So, how, how is it, what, what's changed about it between that and this? So, as you know, I work in a bookstore, and, you know, many devices play Angry Birds and games like that and stuff, and 
I get 15 minute breaks every couple of hours. Like, by a couple, I mean five. And it stinks. Uh, I've only gotten to take like two breaks once and something or other. Either way, I play a lot of dots. Like, I play 14 games of dots over my break. And th- that has just lifted my spirits so much. I could continue to work and continue to squander the earnings. So, like, when we were using my, I, I, I had the Nexus 4 at the time, we would tether the Nexus 4 at, into a hotspot and then we would have your phone tethered to it so that we could play Ingress together up at, up on yes. campus. And having a real internet speed, I've got 19 megs down. Right. And so just, I get a tenth of a kilobyte up and 1.1 peak, like at the best, on my DSL. Phone. Yeah. So it's really sad when your phone's internet is faster. Now, yeah. what service provider did you have with your um, Optimus Elite? Optimus Elite with Virgin Mobile, and I have switched to T-Mobile, and it has been infinitely better. So what do you think they did differently between those two things? I'm not sure. Like, but, uh, uh, Virgin Mobile was primarily, uh, you know, like Evo Do or more or less 3G. So, you know, the HSPA plus, right? Now. So you have your intermediate between 3G and 4G. So that that must have helped a lot. It has, mm-hmm. and I just get better cell coverage now, and everything is better. Better, yeah. Um, now, are there any downsides with this new phone? Battery life is pretty bad, mm-hmm. um, and I did buy a battery, and I did buy the special torque screws you'll need to open it, um, but I'm still waiting to replace it. Right. So I, I, I mentioned when I gave the phone to Matt that I didn't think the Nexus 4's battery held up very well over the time that I had it because I stressed it out quite quite heavily. And, you know, this phone isn't actually, you know, it's just getting to be, it's not even a year old yet because I bought it in February. Like, I bought two smartphones in the same year that cost $350. So you should be the one reviewing this. Well, Matt's had it longer, and he cares more about it. I don't care much now. <laughs> That's because you have a new product. I have too. the new Nexus 5. Uh, and the Nexus 5 is a great phone. You know, it's it's a little bit bigger screen-wise, so it's nice to see. Uh, you, you wouldn't think that having a 420... 420- pixel resolution is really necessary but it turns out that's really nice to have uh you wouldn't think that a 1080p display on a phone would matter but it turns out it's pretty nice to have uh the the processor uh the snapdragon 800 you know the processor that we all love here Mm -hmm. it's fantastic it can handle everything it does pretty well in all the benchmarks um that matter specifically chrome you know it's it's a great phone now the price i i feel was a little bit weird I don't know if it was really necessary for for Google to to price it at the uh, $400 mark and then make me pay $444 for it. I I would have been okay if if we'd lowered that a little bit, but it's still a nice phone. Yeah. Now, so... Let's see. see, uh, You uh, say 1080p and like a phone size screen. Yeah, so it's 5-inch display. That reminds me an awful lot of the NVIDIA Shield, which apparently also came out this year. Yeah, it did. Um, like apparently you can do things like, uh, you know, play games on it and play your Steam games from your PC on mm-hmm. it. If and uh, only if you have a 600 series card that's above 660. So, um, do we know if, uh, Buckface is all over this or not? Well, he doesn't have an NVIDIA shield, so he doesn't do that. But he is using one of the new NVIDIA things, the Shadowplay s- system, which allows him to record gameplay or, or something. But uh, is he enthused about it as he is about, say, a uh, Rift? Uh, I think he's less enthused about it because he'd have to have another console. And I, I and it's not even a real console. It's an NVIDIA uh, Shield. controller. Yeah, it's, it's a weird intermediate between a controller and a console. It's, it's both at the same time and yet neither. So, really? Anyways... Yes. Uh, so, uh, Ian Buck, speaking of him, he also bought, uh, about, he also bought a Nexus 5, and he loves it. He didn't have T-Mobile, he didn't have service for quite a while, actually, even though he bought it. He, um, you know, waited a few weeks to activate. So he had the phone on campus, you know, where he lives, and so he had Wi-Fi every day. But, you know, you don't, you don't really know how to experience the delight of having an always connected device until it's always connected. So it's good that he has that now. And of course, our good friend and never present podcaster Sam also now has a Nexus 5, but we don't really know what he thinks about it because he doesn't know how to talk. So turns out, turns out, uh, Ian Buck though, did he buy his, uh, Chromebook this year or he, I guess he just had it and he doesn't use it much anymore. 
mostly because of you assaulting him that you claim it's a piece of crap. It is a piece of crap. So Chromebooks would be great, and I I would love to have a great Chromebook. Uh, really, actually, that's not true. But I would want people to have a great Chromebook. But there aren't any great Chromebooks because it's a Pixel. That's yeah, not a the Chrome, Pixel. That's not a great Chromebook. Uh, so a lot of people they order a Pixel, it dies within a month, and then they complain heavily. Uh, it happens far off. Really? Yeah. Apparently, the build quality is good, but the quality control is bad. Hmm. Yes. That can't be. Why? Then the build quality is suck, and everything about it is suck. No, the build quality for the ones that work are great, but the quality control is horrible. Ah, uh, I don't know. Build quality does not equal quality control. I would say quality goes down if quality control is down. It's not true, though. They're, they're related, but they're not the same. Okay. Uh, so uh, I agree with Ryan. But also, there's no good, not expensive Chromebook, which is the point. So the the, the Chromebook Pixel was that this year? Was that? Yeah, yeah it must have been early so. this year. That was January. like in March. Why didn't we put that somewhere in the show? We did. We talked about it. We did. No, no. Uh-huh. we talked about it. We talked about it just a minute ago. Yeah, I, I forgot. I'm not listening. So I guess, <laughs> I guess the Chromebook Pixel was a nice gesture. You know, it's uh, a really fast device. Does it have an i5 in it? I believe it does. You know, it's it it's, so. it's a real computer, but the problem is, it's too expensive for normal people, and normal people will just buy for that much money a real computer. Uh, you know, whether that's a MacBook Pro or you know an HP 11 or an HP Envy or you know, yeah, some... isn't it isn't it like fourteen hundred dollars? Right, it's like fifteen. Yeah, f- yeah. In other words, you're too poor. You're rich, but you're too poor for a Google Glass. Exactly. Right. Just like that. <laughs> and and they the, and the two products don't even have synergy. Like you can't even just Bluetooth your way some maps from one to the other. So that that's too bad. <laughs> but uh, the the real problem with the Chromebook line is that when you have a product, they're really poorly made. So uh, they they come with sure they come with a Haswell, but they're Celeron Haswells. Who cares? They're still Celerons. Uh, they come with two gigs of memory. That's not very much. Um, you know, the, the iPad comes with a gig of memory, and Safari on the iPad isn't a pleasant experience. Uh, those tabs unload far too fast. You know, the Chromebook experience is really hampered by the inability to launch a terminal window so you can SSH into something. If you could do yeah. that, it m- might be useful. Um, for normal people, though, I think it, it could be nice. Uh, you know, for like somebody like my grandmother, she just uses the internet. She doesn't use local apps. She doesn't use you know, a picture editor. She doesn't use Word. She doesn't do anything. She just goes to Facebook and occasionally will check her email. So for someone like her, it could be really nice. At any rate, it beats the crap out of Raspberry Pi. Oh, effortlessly. But doesn't everything, even your Pentium 2 is beating it. <laughs> well, in a certain Java-based benchmark it is. Yeah, well, it's, I'm, I'm sure it beats it in every benchmark. So oh, I'm so not is that exactly, what you've been doing? I'm not... I'm not exactly sure what the uh, clock speed parity is between uh, ARM and a aged x86 CPU is. Yeah, it's hard to tell. But, you know, the Raspberry Pi is clocked two to three times fa- faster. Mm-hmm. So. so do we want to go through some uh, big headlines that happened this year that weren't from products? We should do it pretty quick, but yeah. Yeah, so let, let's start with Bitcoin. What happened to Bitcoin this year? Well, so at the start of the year, Bitcoins were... Um, they were around two hundred dollars, and then they they became like sixty five, and then they started working their way back up to around two hundred, and all of a sudden they're five hundred, then a thousand, and then they're back down to five hundred again. And now the current um Bitcoin on um, one second, one second, one second, uh, I'm groaning until it works. <laughs> so, anyways, I eight hundred and three dollars. Uh, I made a rather hilarious uh, blog post uh, about Bitcoin hitting uh, one thousand, uh, you know, one thousand dollars, and uh, in that I, you know, essentially reversed the equation and said that the U.S. dollar dropped be- below one uh, thousandth right. of a Bitcoin. Yeah, exactly. And about how this would wreak uh, epic e- economic devastation uh, upon the American economy. Yeah. Probably will. Well, I love when you do these parody posts because uh, they're just so well written. So you know, I sort of you know wrote it like a news article. Yep. And you know, in satire of all the uh, the knee jerk reactions of like uh, you know like all these economists everywhere. So so, so um, another big thing that happened to its technology giant this year was Rim. Who's Rim? 
Um, some phone away. company. Some phone company. Rim. I mean BlackBerry. Uh, BlackBerry. BlackBerry. We're not doing a good job here. BlackBerry. 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 Uh, BlackBerry. Well, <laughs> Rim. Rim changed their name this year. Do you remember when they changed their name? Like it happened in the middle right of the year. Before their BBM event. Yeah. Or BBM World. So, uh, the the I don't I the, the that time of year it's foggy to be now, but. Rim changed their name to BlackBerry, and they launched BB10. And it was supposed to be the greatest thing ever. Matt and I really liked some of the UI concepts that they had in BB10. That interview that, that never actually ended up in their phones was nope. great. You know, there was a lot of ideas that could be really great if they came to Android, but they never will because that would be stealing. But it's a good idea anyway. And so now, um, you know, we had Thorsten Hines as CEO of BlackBerry. Uh, do we know what happened to him? Canned. Yeah, he got kicked out. And now there's, uh, I think it's his name is Chen, but I don't really know too much about him. It's gone. It, Blackberry's kind of over, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Their their ship has sailed, or their vine has been picked. Can't tell. You know, I haven't heard that one yet. I made it up just now. Hmm. Vines were popular this year. Well, why don't we talk about Vine and Twitter? Well, I hear Twitter got their IPO. Yeah, Twitter had their IPO. Do you know why it was more successful than the Facebook IPO? Because Twitter's a real service? Well, I, I don't know. I, I think it has a lot to do with Facebook overexposing themselves to the mass public, whereas Twitter isn't is frequently used by normal people. And also, they manage expectations a lot better. Like, mm. they're not aiming to rule the world. Twitter's just aiming to rule Twitter. And they're doing a great job at that. Yes, they are. Mm-hmm. Um, Softblank Soft tried Blanc. to attack Sprint. And then succeeded. Yes, the the attack of of Sprint. So this actually started last October, last year, but it was concluded by the summer of this year. And so Sprint is now owned at least 80% of it by SoftBank. Yeah. So aren't they trying to eat T-Mobile too? Yes, and so that's another big headline that involves SoftBank and Sprint. So uh, two weeks ago, uh, it, it came to light, I believe by the Wall Street Journal, that Sprint... And its parent owner, SoftBank, had an interest in acquiring T-Mobile for around $20 billion. And then last week we found out that they're in final talks, and it won't be $20 billion in cash. It'll be $20 billion in Sprint stocks. And who they would be paying isn't T-Mobile directly, which is kind of weird. They'd really be paying uh, Deutsche Telekom to get out of the U.S. market so that they could own them instead. So it's a really weird kind of exchange. Uh, do we know the future of the ownership of uh, the color magenta on the internet? Uh, we don't know that yet because if you, you'd assume if Sprint bought it, it would turn to yellow. And so magenta to yellow is a really bad contrast switch. And, I don't think so. And the world would end. <laughs> nah, it'd be fun. Hey, speaking of the world ending, um, this year um, some guy dumped a whole bunch of papers everywhere about the NSA. Uh, was that our uh, WikiLeaks? Um, Not Assange. Not Assange, huh? No news. In that vein, though, uh, apparently this uh, nobody from uh, Hong Kong showed up uh, uh, named Edward Snowden, and he pretty much said that, yeah, the NSA is up in all your business, and, uh, yeah, have fun being spied on, so I essentially. Think it, I think it started sometime in the summer, right? About six months Yeah, ago. it happened... I think it happened at the end of May. Yeah. And, May or the end of June. And I think that the first revelation was that Verizon was, well, Verizon in particular, which is, I don't know why in particular though, but they were keeping track of all your metadata whenever you made a phone call. I think that's so, what started it. Yeah, so metadata is pretty much everything about the phone call except actually listening to it. Right. So It it's is the, the digital copy of your analog phone call. <laughs> including the time and date and how long and the frequency but not the actual words <laughs> legal so so uh there is a lot of uh anger over this as could be you know decently expected uh so much that i dedicated some of the latter bits of many of my podcasts to it you know it's kind of so. weird that there's allegedly anger about it but there's very little being like done there aren't like riots in the streets there aren't protests at phone companies you don't um, one person doesn't count stop holding that so I I, i've actually heard of protests happening but it's not widespread it's not a national outcry it's not the whole nation isn't protesting most people are just like eh, okay whatever stop using the so, internet so 
uh, now that you mention it, I'm pretty sure that more people were angered uh, with the Occupy movement. Yeah, exactly. So this this whole Snowden thing, I think a lot of people don't really understand it. But then the people who do understand it or the people who could try to understand it don't really have an interest to because the media frames it as, well, now he's, you know, basically violated, you know, top secret documents and their privacy. International law. Yeah. And now he's the bad guy. And and so that that's the problem that I think a lot of people have with it, and that's why they don't really read much into it. So you know the the issue is you know it's like yeah the NSA is you know getting all the stuff, but you know in the future you know how politicians are they cannot restrain themselves. Not at all. So you know they're like okay well we're already you know we already know about their phone calls why don't we just listen in anyway? So you know it's not about now it's about the future. Well, uh, let's see. What else do we have? We had drones everywhere this year. I think I heard more words about drones suddenly in the mass media this year than any other year. Um, you know, you have uh, you have Amazon's drones. You have the government's drones. You have everybody has a drone. Cops have drones. Yeah, drones have drones. Uh, uh, Zerg have drones. Right, exactly. So they're just drones everywhere. You know, it's it's kind of a weird uh, drone problem. Uh, I can't really drone too much about this, though. Let me talk about Target's major breach, though. Yeah, I, I'm almost thinking about switching credit cards. Yeah, so you're th- thinking about that. Well, I don't know. I I think if you have a credit card, you're probably okay. So in 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 November, on November 27th, uh, apparently somehow uh, between that day and December 14th, just massive amounts of credit cards and debit cards and their pins and other information stored on the magnetic strip was just taken and then obtained somehow by some hackers somewhere magically. It's pretty, pretty magic. So we don't, we still don't know how it happened. We don't know where in the chain of, you know, authentication or where in the chain of transfer or where in the chain target has this happened. We don't know, which is absurd. We should know by now. And Target's really not saying too much. There's there's a bunch of lawsuits with them right now. But Target says, despite all that, your cards are safe, your PIN numbers are safe, because we have them encrypted. So you now, think it's all fine? No. Now, you realize how long, how much entropy does a PIN number have? Like, none. The, 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 the PIN numbers involved are usually between four and six characters long. Mine are exactly four. M- mine is also four. I've never seen yeah. a six-character PIN, but apparently they do exist. So so that's uh, that's a search space of 10,000. Right. So it could be done instantly. Like with yeah. uh, a, a Raspberry Pi could even do it pretty yes. quick. So yes. So the, the, their, yeah. their encryption assurances aren't very insuring, really. Now, unless... They they could have made it a little bit harder if they uh put some salts onto the passwords before they encrypted them. I mean pins, but I really doubt Target's that clever. So I don't know. So but this happens. I know. Can't be. I know that you know since you apparently live right next door to the Target Zero store. The Target or something, One actually, but yes. Um, that this probably affects you quite a bit, considering that like your dad works there yes, or something, exactly. and you go there every day. Pretty much. Sometimes so, twice a day. It happens. But so, but, the, so it's it's the, kinda funny. So if you have a target credit card or a target debit card, yeah, they'll they'll just take care of you up and down. They, they, yeah, anybody can buy whatever you want with that right now and we'll just wipe it for you. They don't really they, they're 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 taking care of their own customers very well at first. Uh though you still have to call them, so that's kinda sad. So the uh the lead developer at my uh you know when actually at my workplace, my lead uh, team guy there, uh, apparently he actually went to Target and used a credit card on the last day of the breach. Oh, yeah. So uh, he's not exactly that happy about it, but he uh, said this morning, it's like, hey, I finally fi- figured out a solution. Just max it out. Oh, that is an interesting solution, but it, maybe not it's in like, the right direction. Yeah, it's like, you want to use these? Well, F you. So a lot of... um. That's okay. There's no sensor for that. Yeah, there is no sensor. No. Um, the, uh, five by five. Darn it. Sorry. Uh, oh. Beep. Okay. Uh, so it's interesting. Uh, put, it, put it in a marker. No. So there's a lot of um a lot of banks are actually before they um 
before people start getting hit, because I'm, I'm sure the hackers are aware of the coverage, a lot of banks are setting up new protections for people so they don't have to deal with this. So they're, they're, if people have raised withdrawal limits, they're lowering that. If people have raised, you know, point of sale limits, they're lowering that. So they're doing a lot in effort to, uh, reduce and minimize their own damages. Uh, cause apparently debit and- cards offer no protection at all. So, so, you know, but in the meantime, you can probably just cancel your cards and get them reissued. Right. But it's still, uh, you know, it's a lot of work. Oh, yeah. uh, I, I remember, I think it was two years ago now that, uh, Steam got compromised. Oh, really? And, and apparently I had my debit card in there. So I just called up the, uh, the 800 number and said, Hey, you know, an online service got compromised. Uh, can has new card, please. And they said yes. So, and they just sent you one. Pretty much. How long did that all take? Uh, that took, uh, like me actually getting my card in the mail. Yeah. It probably took about two or three weeks. Yeah, that's not so bad, but that seems like a long time. That's a very, very long time. I don't carry the thing around with me. Instead, I just, you know, carry around like 80 bucks with me everywhere. That's very sure. ass and stuff. Like, yeah. 80? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Some, some people actually have sort of efficient cars. So. Oh. It's a hundred bills cars, for me. Cars that were made in this millennium. Oh. Oh four. It's still not good enough. <laughs> it's this side of the two thousand. Okay, it's fine. fine. It's still not that good. So so you finally got rid of your uh Mercury? Yeah, that has you didn't been hear about that, hat, did you? Yeah, we'll, we'll By the way, that was a two thousand flat. I'll give you the short story. My sister drove it into a wall. <laughs> Uh, battery shattered in half. The engine wanted to come through the windshield. She is alive and and mostly safe, so that's good. She was ticketed, which is bizarre. Normally, when you get into a car accident, you don't get ticketed. But okay, she she drove into a wall at fifty five miles an hour, and uh, apparently that's yeah. reckless. It is. Yeah. So uh, speaking of reckless, why don't we talk about our good friend Steve Ballmer? Uh, yeah, I mean. Kind of sad. He's uh, so, going away. So suddenly, one day in summer, uh, it it comes to light that Steve leaving in a year, just just gone. Yeah, even Gates went back for that day. Right. Uh, be everybody went back for that. Uh, he went to the shareholders and said, so, "Keep him around," and still didn't work. Right. Well, so uh, Steve had been implementing his division of services. So there would be the Windows group, there'd be the entertainment group, and there'd be maybe that mobile group over there, and then of course the enterprise group over there. So that was Steve's big and big vision for Microsoft. But I forgot about the developer group. But developers, 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 developers. Developers, developers, developers Steam Machine and anyway. <laughs> of the world. Oh I forgot. Never would have remembered. So, what happened to Steve Ballmer? Do we know why he got kicked out for this year? Um, it was pretty... um, because he hasn't been kicked out yet. Uh, okay. I think it had something to do with a nine hundred million dollar write off. So there was that the nine hundred million dollar write off. What was that for again? Surfaces. Surfaces, unsold Surface RTS. So there's that. Oh, yeah. we skipped the uh, Surface Two. Didn't yeah, we? that's not a product that everybody wants to know about. Uh, so there, there's that. But what else? Like, what else did he do to anger everyone on the board to kick him out? I don't know. We don't know. Uh, but that, um, pretty much the failure of them getting on the mobile device revolution. Right. That, and among other things, the, the just the broader failure of Surface. Uh, Windows eight. The the well. So we don't really know about that because Sonofsky was kicked out last year, last uh, Thanksgiving era yeah didn't didn't you like cancel a show and had to resurrect it for yeah, some reason yeah yeah so we we, we weren't going to do at the nexus anymore for that week and then suddenly <laughs> synopsis <laughs> wow that's amazing yes and then suddenly he just got fired and bam we have to do a show again yeah it was a good show mm-hmm. uh what else did we uh do this year uh nokia was magically purchased for how many dollars undisclosed no we know seven I felt like it was a lot. Like, wasn't it four point four Instagrams? I thought was it only seven? Or something. I th- it was seven something. I thought it was fourteen. You lie a lot. I rounded to the nearest seven Instagrams. It feels like something I might say. So well, yeah, yeah, seven. So what do you know about Nokia being purchased? So obviously, Elop was there for quite some time. They hadn't been doing very well in the 
Windows phone market. So what was the big deal? It wasn't one. I don't know. What does Microsoft gain out of having a... Another division. Another division? A phone manufacturer. So they they gain a phone manufacturer, so, which is great. So they motorola Nokia. You know, and, and if you look at it like that, that's exactly what they did, but with, with, with no regard to the patents and also no regard to being fair. So Motorola is kept at arm's length from Google, whereas Nokia is now the heart. Maybe the lung. I'm not sure. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. So I, I, I also heard that the, there were some uh, strange things that died this year. What were those things? Yes, yeah, so it seemed that 2013 was finally the year that the 90s died. Really? So, yes. Uh, I believe it all started uh, back earlier this year when Alta Vista got shut down by Yahoo. Uh, apparently, it was still a thing that uh, it was essentially just a, a front or just an interface uh, for uh, Yahoo's search engine. Uh, so they finally figured out that, hey, why do we have this still uh, when we have Yahoo stuff over here and we need people to go to Yahoo more? Um, and then uh, it was later on in the year, I think it might have been around October-ish, that uh, the Wizard of Id, uh, that is John Carmack, the uh, programmer there, uh, left uh, his position at Id uh, to uh, focus more on the uh, uh, Oculus Rift uh, stuff that uh, they're doing. Uh, he had apparently uh, been hired on uh, to the Rift team uh, like a few weeks before then, uh, but he you know, apparently just couldn't have two uh, very important jobs at one time. Uh, so, you know, but, uh, you know, last, I don't think it was last year, I think it might have been the year before that uh, Rage came out. And, you know, I didn't have any id games up until then. So, you know, it's like, hey, this is like a historical, you know, you know, groundbreaking company that releases, releases a lot of pretty good games. And it turned out to be a general disappointment. It is the prettiest game that I have, but it's empty and void and doesn't have any spirit to it. Darn, I thought you were so, just talking about Guild Wars there for a second. Um, I'm talking about a game, actually. Ah, right, right, right. Uh, uh, as opposed to an ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, then again, I thought about it, you know, about Carmack leaving id, and it was like, eh, stuff happens. Yeah, it does. Uh, I think it's actually pretty good that he's he, he's focusing on one project now, um, because I recall that one of the leads for Oculus Rift died in some kind of biking accident, car accident. Yeah. So maybe yeah. that was also had something to do with him moving over to so, Oculus full time. And uh, perhaps the most impactful thing of all of these is that uh, Nullsoft, uh, the uh, division that uh, AOL has, apparently they're just shutting that all down. Uh, Winamp and Shoutcast specifically. So apparently, as of December twentieth, uh, it's no longer being supported. And uh, you know, which is too bad. Uh, but apparently there were rumors that Microsoft was going to snatch those up. You know, it's funny um, that, that that's true. And, you know, it's weird because you can still download it even today. So whatever that deal was, either AOL stopped threatening it or so, somebody bought it. So, yeah, but apparently that Microsoft rumor kind of faded. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, like, two weeks ago, it fired back up that some unknown buyer was courting uh, uh you know, that division. Uh, but, you know, something still could happen, but this is the uh, penultimate day of the year. And, you know, you know, around this time, all holidays tend to spring up like landmines on a colander. Uh, so, you know, don't ex- really expect anything to come of this uh, this year. So That's probably okay. But, yeah, I uh, apparently I'm the only person in this, on this network that still uses Winamp on a daily basis. So up until recently, I had Winamp on my phone to stream Shoutcast, but I don't really use it, so I uh, got rid of it. So, so yeah, I have the uh, the latest Winamp on my desktop and the uh, the last uh, Winamp two release on Twentieth Century. So, mm-hmm. so well, why don't we talk about some things that are upcoming? Yeah, and there's this 2014. It looks like there's going to be a lot of you things know coming. we have all of these same events that happen every year. You know, we have 
we have Build, we have WWDC, we have some Google I.O. somewhere, and then we have, you know, some other events like E3 or, uh, you know, some fall event or, you know, stuff like that. But we have an event that happens every four years, this event. We do have that event. What is that? That is the uh, Winter Olympics. Yes. Uh, every four years we have the Winter Olympics, and uh, do we know anything interesting that they're doing this year technology-wise for that? We do. Um this, so the town where it's being held hired a team of Canadian uh, IT guys to come and build one of the world's fastest wireless networks using all proprietary, crazy, un-IE, IEEE yeah. certified standards. Mm-hmm. Allegedly, it can be awesome. Well, and that makes sense because there's going to be a lot of people using a lot of bandwidth and they're going to be, you know, streaming video, they're going to be posting video, they're going to be doing all sorts of stuff. So they really need to make their internet there um, very resilient in the face of all of that. And considering this is, you know, Winter Olympics are probably up on, you know, a mountain somewhere. Right, that's true. Uh, which is like out in the sticks. Mm-hmm. And there probably isn't that great of a network connection out there. Well, that that might make it easier for them to uh, run some fiber really quick. Yeah. Up yeah, probably satellites probably. back down. Yeah, just like that. Up and down. Copper. Uh yeah. what else do we have coming up in the near term? We have CES, of course. That's just around the corner that's, now. That's in a week and a half. That's on the seventh. Uh so what do we know about that CES? the theme that everybody is touting this year is the Internet of Things, but I don't really like that theme. I think it's icky. Icky? Really? Well buzzwords. Yeah, it's a buzzword and it's not really a descriptive. Like it's not really an internet of things. It's really more of a Local area network of things. Hmm. Yeah. You know, I'm also thinking of, it's like, oh, people get all caught up in this buzzword thing, so they make a lot of things without thinking about, oh, is this, is this stuff secure? And suddenly you have someone around the world turning off your lights. That'll be wonderful. I can't wait. Um, we have uh, Windows, phone, Windows Phone 8.1 that's coming up in March, I think, at uh, the new build which is scheduled for a realistic time this year. Um, Also, we have the doom of Windows XP, finally, after years and years of striving. April, it'll all come down. Yeah, and so this week at the bookstore, I set up a new cash register, Mm -hmm. and it is the first computer in the entire store's history to run Windows 7. Everything else is still XP. That's so sad. And there's no way there's a budget to... uh, Get more? Yeah. Yeah. Like, another year we'll get one more register. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so there's going to be big surprises. Do we, do we, th- can we think of any big surprises for 2014 that will just happen that we don't, we don't know about or haven't heard about? Hmm. AMD will be successful? Yeah, it's a surprise I'd like to have. Don't, don't see it happening. I mean, Intel unless. Intel goes down the tube? What could, what could Intel do to do that, though? Um, let's see. When when they forget to put uh, SATA controllers on one of their products boards, nobody cares. Um, no, I can't um, think of anything. They uh, miscount the transistors on their chips. Well, that's an AMD move, but I mean, like I guess it could happen. two billion. <laughs> Oops, two billion, round and wrong. Well, so there's that. I'm I'm kind of thinking like, um, an, an unknown product from Apple or uh, a new Apple TV. Uh, no, uh, With an actual well, screen. an you know, iWatch. Uh, yeah, something like that, or or some kind of reunification of all of the products again, um, because the iPhone and the iPods and the iPads they all so- seem kind of separate now, and they all need to go back into one platform, and and I don't know what that will be, but there could be that, um, you know, some some surprise stupid wearable device other than Google Glass from Google, um, you know, uh, again like a watch. I'm not not really looking forward to it, but I wouldn't be that surprised if they did it. Black turtlenecks. Oh, black that, turtlenecks, that yes. Support phone calls. That will be very handy. Um, I can't really think of the surprises because I want to be surprised. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, so. well, do we want to talk about some other things, or are we good? I think that pretty much covers this year. Any, anybody else? Well, well, I mean, there was a few sciencey things that happened. Oh, what what science things happened this year of note? Um, well, I think it was in February that some meteor entered the atmosphere over Russia and, uh, broke a lot of windows. Yes, that was this year. Yeah, so, which, uh, ironically, the best footage was captured on, uh, dashboard cameras. That is pretty funny, but, yeah, I guess it's not surprising, because most people aren't using cameras for the sky much. So, 
and uh, apparently the uh, the car insurance uh, situation over there is so bad that apparently a significant fraction of drivers have uh, uh, you know dashboard cameras. So, That's interesting. And then and then there is this comet that came around, and I was expecting to be looking at it about now, uh, but apparently it uh, you know people were trying to determine you know what the uh, uh, what you might call it, the thing of the ellipse of whether it's a closed or an open one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but apparently that was kind of irrelevant because it didn't really make it out of the sun. So yeah, I remember that. That was pretty recent, wasn't it? Yeah, that was back in, around Thanksgiving, actually. Yeah. Well, I, I'm sure there was other things that happened, but I don't remember. They they just finished China. The, yeah, China put their 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 rover on the moon. Was it a rover? Was it actually a lander? They called it a rabbit. I know, but wasn't it actually a, a lander? Technically, rover. Was it really a rover? I was under the impression it was a lander. So, uh, did that one? Was it this year or last year that uh, the new rover went to Mars? Uh, I feel like that was last year. Last year, the that was seven seconds of terror. Yeah, that brought was... to you by Sam. So last year. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty good. Um, you know the 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 astronauts just finished repairing their coolant leak, so that that's pretty important for the International Space Station. To, yeah, and that to Italian guy had a coolant leak in his uh his suit. I'm drowning in space. Oh no! You know it's a pretty bad situation if it has to happen. So, but uh, I have one thing to look forward to next year mm-hmm. uh, because for the first time in six years, I am student loan free. Oh, that's great! Congratulations. Yes. Uh, now I just need to pay off everyone else, and I'll be good. Who is everyone uh, else? Uh, certain parties I cannot disclose at this time. That sounds pretty Terrifying. suspicious. <laughs> uh, um, well, well, how much money are you spending at Domino's this year? $670.28. Unlikely. Blah, this was this year's total. How do you know this? I, I um, calculated this a few days ago. Um, Did you so know? So Domino's sends you an email receipt whenever you make a purchase. Um, how much did you say? $670.28. I feel like it's got to be higher than that. Because last that's, year was $1,000. Yeah. And that's I'm sure like you had more. less. Yeah. How did you calculate this? Well, I just said 52 weeks. Like you only eat one pizza from Domino's a week. Well, you know, Greece is expensive these days. I know, but it's so good. <laughs> it's the same price yeah. as always. Uh, okay, so that's good. Also, this year, today I got a new gun. And so, you know, back when I was a florister, I had a... Florister now? Oh, I was a florist. <laughs> that's better, um, thank you. Well, I bought this very, very, very nice, thick, Klein leather belt. And it was great. I want, like, like, they don't make them bigger. Like, I'd have to go get some, I have to switch companies and get a different belt if I wanted a different, better gun belt. Like, it, it held all my tools, held all the other things. So I gotta fit in it. I can't be walking down the streets with, you know, my organs displaced. It's too tight of a belt. You could. Or I could just, you know, buy a different belt. Yeah. Yeah, I might have Or to. you could save money by not buying grease. I, I feel like lettuce is more expensive because it just gets wasted. Yeah, because you don't Sadly, need it. You're right. Right. Sadly, that's true. Probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so, uh, yeah. How about some? How about some other things to look forward to? Okay. What are they? Uh, uh, specifically, I need a new laptop. Really? Yes, because uh, mine died. It's uh, always good to have, have a heard. laptop. I disagree. Yeah, I well, live my life laptop. Matt free. Matt lives his life with a desktop that roves with him. I can do that. So, I have room in my truck for my desktop. I know you have. So, um, what are you thinking? Probably, for I haven't really looked yet. I'm not sure if I will want a discrete GPU or not, because you know, integrated graphics are apparently not crap these days. They're not crappy, but they're not great either. Intel's are pretty good. So, I'll, although I hear that AMD's is better. So, you know, but the, then then again, the thing with it, Integrated graphics is: Do I want good graphics or do I want a good CPU? Well, I think so. the other all, all, another question is: Do you, do you want Windows eight or do you want something horrible? Yeah, um, 
Integrated graphics Linux. in the Linuxy area is a uh, kernel panic area. Well, I don't know. It depends on if you, who you buy from. Then, like, I'm sure there's somebody who ha- has integrated graphics so, that do work. I got this Gigabyte uh, E350, and um, I've tried to put FreeBSD on it. Mm-hmm. Every ten seconds, dump memory. That's dump. not dump. Linux. Dump. That's FreeBSD. If you put like Ubuntu on, it might work. I, I yeah, like and free. I've, and I've, I've actually I've actually heard that Intel open source drivers are actually pretty good. Yeah. So. I, I wouldn't. I don't know. Laptops are exp- are are hard and they're kind of expensive. I'm I'm I, my MacBook Air is getting old. I need to replace, it, but I'm too poor. So and then uh, I'm not expecting it this year, but probably in the year after next, the next StarCraft II campaign. Um, say that will be the Protoss one. Um, and then all those kickstarted kickstarters that I funded, uh, that you know went so far over their stretch goals or whatever. I know uh, that myself and Ian and my former co-host uh, have pitched into Star Citizen, uh, which is an upcoming space flight uh, simulator uh, that I believe has raised over 35, maybe 36 million dollars now. It's been rather crazy the past few weeks that you know each week they get a million dollars and they uh, have a press release about it. And they're like, oh, this is like all the new stuff we're adding to it. I'm like, okay, guys, stop it. Um, don't. I thought you had a game you're supposed to be making. Could you do that first and like make that really good? Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Uh, we also have uh, Net Gain, uh, which is the game of our uh, one of our sort of more reputable guests, uh, John Gosling. Uh, that. Uh, you know, like he pretty much posts betas every now and then that I haven't really checked up on, but uh, that should be coming out in the next year, uh, along with a Broken Age, uh, which is the Double Fine adventure that uh, got kickstarted. Like uh, it wasn't early this year; it was early the year before last. Um, that you know pretty much put the uh, Kickstarter and the whole crowdfunding idea on the map. Um, and then you might have heard me mention uh, Road Rash that I played on 20th Century. Uh, someone has, a group of guys have gotten together and made a spiritual successor of stor- sorts in the form of Road Redemption, uh, which is essentially Road Rash remade on modern technology. Um, and then uh, some other things, too. Uh, say, well, I guess, even though I have it at the bottom of my list, uh, also uh, Maya, uh, which is a uh, space colony uh, game, uh, sort of like SimCity, but for a space colony. Um, and then uh, also the uh, Jeremy Soul Symphony Number no. 1. Uh, that should be coming out this year as well. Uh, apparently he's uh, lined up the studio uh, like at some Skywalker ranch. That's supposed to be really good. Uh, along with uh, Maluka, that one chick that made that really great uh, Elder Scrolls uh, song. Um and then uh, some uh, TV shows, if you will, some web series. Uh, Space Janitor Season 3, uh, which is still ongoing as of this moment, and they have uh, crossed their goal quite some time ago. Uh, I believe they have like 10 or so days left on that. And uh, also Loading Ready Run's final season of Comedy Sketches, uh, which will be coming up on next Monday. Oh, well, that's good. So... And I probably have a few more, but those are pretty good ones off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, Anything uh, you're looking forward to in the new year? Well, is it bad if I say I'm looking forward to Domino's, even though it's my goal to... No, it's it's not. It's That would be your definition of you. I'm looking forward to a bunch of podcasts, a bunch more pizza, and some good anime. Really? And always guns. Uh, I know you're looking forward to those. But so, do you know what happens in two days? Uh, New Year's Day. Yeah. Yeah. That's the day my unused deer tag expires. Oh, that's too bad. I what are you going to do about that? I never did get to shoot a deer this year. No, but that was shooting with a bow, correct? Yeah, I, I tried archery this year, and I went to the archery range a few days ago, and I punched myself in the face. Yes, you told because, me about uh, that. my release broke. Well, it was kind of cold. But still, work. Might, that might have had something to do with it. I don't know. I should stick with guns. Uh, I like the bows better, but I don't care either way. Really? No. You really don't... Yeah, I got you to look like you're holding my crossbow. No, if you think that looks like anything, it looked like you put something in front of me. That's what it looked like. 
convenient how that's what happened, but regardless, um, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, I think that sounds good then. Yeah, we'll uh, see you next year. Yep, Happy New Year.